I would like to introduce you to Geese Bend Quilts. Geese Bend is in Alabama and it's a rural place that doesn't have very much money. They have become incredibly famous for making beautiful quilts. In fact, if you own a Geese Bend quilt, you own something very valuable. This is a book called Stitchin' in Poland, all about Geese Bend quilts. Geese Bend women. Geese Bend women are mothers and grandmothers, wives, sisters and daughters, widows. Geese Bend women are cooks and homemakers, gardeners, church members, choir members, leaders. Geese Bend women are talented and creative, capable, makers of artful quilts, unmatched. Geese Bend women are relatives, neighbors and friends, same as me. Who would have thought? For as long as anybody can remember, the women of Geese Bend have stitched up quilts to be slept on and under, sat on at a picnic, wrapped in when sick, or covered with while reading on a cold winter night. Who would have thought that one day these same quilts would be hanging on museum walls, their makers famous? Who would have ever thought? Beneath the quilting frame. Baby girl, that's me, played beneath the quilting frame on a nine patch quilt. My great great grandmother and her sisters made when great gran was herself baby girl. I remember the warm brown faces of my mama, grandma, and great gran as they sewed, talked, sang, and laughed above my tented playground. All the while, steady fingers pieced together colorful scraps of familiar cloth into something more lovely than anything they had been before. Oh, how I remember. I remember Mama's gentle voice singing softly, lulling her baby girl to sleep. Something else. My space beneath the quilting frame became too small for growing legs and a questioning mind. Busy threading needles and cutting scraps, I listened and learned the recipes for 11 kinds of jelly, what to do for teething toddlers, and how to get rid of mold, and the words to a hundred hymns and gospel songs, all the while waiting for my turn. Where to start? Today, Grandma winked at me. There is a promise in her smile. It is your time, she says, to piece your own quilt. How did you begin your first quilt? I asked Mama. She's getting ready for work and the long drive over to Camden. Look for the heart. She pulls me close. When you find the heart, your work will leap to life, strong, beautiful, and independent. Nothing wasted. Grandma wants me to learn to quilt using the old ways, all by hand, nothing wasted. Her nut brown hands gently unravel the stitches from the hem of an old red and white gingham dress. Stitch by stitch, slowly she backs out of the dress, taking apart what she'd put together long ago. Snip, snip, pull. The thread is gone. The dress falls apart. A puddle of red and white gingham on the floor. Now I know patch of grandma's old dress will be the heart of my quilt. So the quilts of Geese Bend are known for using all of the fabric that they had on hand. They would unstitch old clothes and old pants and use every single piece. Sometimes you can tell that something came from an apron or a pair of jeans or you can tell that it came from a dress. And there are no perfect straight lines. It looks like it's done by hand, stitch by stitch. You can see the wear on the knees of these pant legs. We are going to create our own quilt using scraps of paper. You will get one large square for creating your quilt piece. You will then get some scraps. Your challenge is to use all of those scraps on your quilt rectangle. Today we will make one rectangle and then we can make another one on another day. You may use two tools today. You may use scissors and glue. You're going to cut your scraps into the shapes that you like. And we are inspired by the Geese Bend quilts and how they had many kinds of rectangles and straight lines on them. Our lines are straight because just like with quilting, we're using scissors to cut our pieces down into smaller sizes. You can kind of just lay pieces around on your quilt's rectangle to see how they fit together. 
I lay and move them around, cut and snip. I change my mind. I put things where I think they look good and then I move them around again. So you can see me just kind of thinking about where they will lie and how I will cut them before I am finished using all of my scraps. Next, I get out some glue. You can either use the white glue, which you open and paint lightly on the back of your paper, or you can use a glue stick. Notice sometimes for my brush to reach the glue inside of the jar, I need to tilt my jar a little bit. And we are going to try and use every single piece of scrap that you are given. That is the challenge. We don't want to waste one particle of scraps. So you can layer your scraps on top of one another so that they fit on top and we get to see all the pretty parts of your papery looking fabric. Your job today is to finish one square using all of your scraps all up. If you have some leftover that you just can't get on, you can put them in the middle of your table and we'll save them for tomorrow.